Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. Today I want to show you a very quick tutorial how to create a piece of patchwork fabric with a nice neat seam on the back. Now let me show you when you might want to use this kind of fabric first of all. This is one of my packing cubes. Now you can make this project um, as part of our online sewing club and as you can see the base of the fabric is just one piece. So on the inside, when you open it up, you can see the wrong side of the fabric. Now all of the raw edges have been bound with binding, so there's no raw edges on show, but you can see the wrong side of the fabric. If however you wanted to use scraps to patchwork together a piece of fabric to use to make these packing cubes, then all of your raw edges would be visible on the inside here and you'd have to bind them in some way or you'd have to line the packing cube so that you didn't see the back. However, with this method of patchwork, it's basically like crazy patch or crazy patchwork. With the method I'm gonna show you, there will be no raw edges on the inside. There will be seams, but they will be neatly finished. And it's basically crazy patch using French seams. So let me explain how it works. So as you can see, I've got together some small scraps of fabric from my stash. These aren't really, really tiny, as you can see. They're fairly average size. In fact, if I measure it for you, just to give you an idea, this one is four and a half inches by about six and a half inches. So it's a decent sized piece. So these scraps often get left over when you're doing various different projects and I'm gonna start to join them together. So I'm gonna take two pieces that look like at least one of their lengths or widths is going to be similar. So this one here, here you go. So this little piece of spotty fabric and this little piece of flowery fabric have similar widths. So I'm gonna join these two pieces first of all. So I'm gonna take these two pieces of fabric and instead of putting them right sides together to sew them together, I'm going to put them wrong sides together like so and I am going to sew down the length of this fabric with a 1 8 seam allowance doing a back tack at the start and the finish. Once I've sewn that with my 1 8 seam allowance I'm going to use my ruler and my rotary cutter just to tidy up the stray loose ends where the fabric has frayed just a little bit and I'm literally going to just skim off the very very edge of that fabric but that's going to then neaten up my seam then I'm going to turn it so that it is now right sides together and if you get any loose stray threads you can pull them out as you go right sides together and I'm going to finger press that really nice and neatly and then I'm going to press it on my iron and give it a really good steam. Once you've given it plenty of steam and you can see you've got a nice crisp seam, you're then gonna take it over to your sewing machine and sew again down the same seam, but this time with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. What this has done is encased your raw edges, so you now have a lovely neat front and an encased seam on the back. Now we want to press this seam over to one side. So whichever side it naturally wants to go to is preferable. So you should now have something that looks nice and neat from the front with a row of top stitching and nice and neat on the back with a flat seam. What you then want to do is straighten up one of your edges. Again, you can just use a quilting ruler and I usually use my seam line as a guide for this to make sure it's nice and straight. And you can skim off one of your edges. You're then gonna be able to use this edge to join your next piece of fabric to. So I'm gonna take my next scrap now this piece, as you can see, is perfect. It's just big enough. So once again, we're gonna be placing our fabrics firstly, wrong sides together, and stitching with a 1 8 seam allowance. Once it's stitched, again, you can tidy up the very, very edge just to get rid of any stray threads.
and now fold it right sides together press well and stitch with a quarter of an inch seam allowance once you've stitched it open it back up press your seam either to the right or the left whichever way it wants to fall naturally and top stitch it down in place so you've now got a piece of fabric that looks like this beautifully neat from the front and really nice and neat from the back too now if you're using lots of small scraps of fabric you may have to make a few pieces this sort of size to get slightly larger pieces of fabric which you can then join together so i'm going to make a few more squares this sort of size and then i'll show you what i mean so i've sewn another couple of pieces this piece here and a slightly skinnier piece here and you can see i've put a piece of fabric on the end of this bit so that now this piece is actually about the same sort of length as this piece so I can straighten up these raw edges or I can choose to use this side straighten up this raw edge straighten up this raw edge and sew that with a French seam once I've then got this piece into one large piece I could add this piece that I've just done to the side but you can see that actually is a little bit short so I could probably do with adding one more strip along the top so I'm going to straighten up these two and stitch them together and I'm going to add another piece to here and then I'll show you how I join them into one big piece. So now you can see I've got two pieces that are very similar in size. What I'm going to do is square up this edge and square up this edge and join them together in the same way. So there you have it, one large piece of crazy patch fabric which is neat on the front and neat on the back. I've got lots of stray cottons I need to get rid of because these are scraps that have been knocking around in my scrap bin for ages so I do need to just pull all of those out and then I'm going to use my rotary cutter to square it up. All I do is make one straight edge and then I use that straight edge to create more straight edges from. Turn it round and again use the straight edge I've just cut to create another one. We're just skimming off as least fabric as we can to make it square and now I need to just pick up all these bits of fabric you can use a lint roller if you've got one to do this you might not have these little threads I've only got them because all of my scraps are all friends with each other in a bin a laundry hamper and they just like to rub up next to each other and fray so I've just got a few little bits to remove there we go so that's the back of my fabric or what is now the wrong side so you can see there are lots of seams but there is no raw edges at all so if that was just going to be inside a packing cube for instance and all of your clothes were going to be packed on top of it I would have absolutely no objection to seeing all these nice neat seams and then on the right side you can see you've got a really nice top stitched piece of neat crazy patch which will make a really lovely bag now you might find that you have to give your fabric a little helping hand, a little bit of a pull from the back sometimes when you're working. That's because at times it will be going through quite a few layers of fabric. It does help to have a really nice sharp needle on your machine too. So I hope you found that tutorial useful. It's a great way of using up all your little pesky scraps. I will see you all again really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!